Hey everybody, this is Gavin with Vintage Computer Center, and today Arcade Dog Bell and I are going to show you how to build a FujiNet, or at least what goes into building FujiNets. Uh, FujiNets are the end-all, be-all Swiss Army knife for the Atari 8-bit computers. It is a disk drive emulator, a modem emulator, a network card, a uh, you know, all around just an amazing device that allows the 40-year-old Atari computers to attach to the internet, to share files across the internet, to mount d disks from across the internet, uh, and replaces any of those aging floppies. It's a great tool to take your original floppy disks with your physical drives and attach them to the computer with the FujiNet and copy those files over before the original disks eventually go bad or the drives fail. Uh, FujiNet is all solid state, so there's no moving parts inside of it to fail, and uh, it's just been an amazing device. Uh, it's kind of a complicated process to build these things. They can be built by hand. Uh, I have built them by hand, but I don't really recommend doing it unless you've got really steady hands and really good eyes. Uh, the components that are on these boards are are. 0402 in size, which means they're a half a millimeter by a millimeter, which is extremely small. And uh, you know, the pads that you have to place them on with very good accuracy are small as well. So it's challenging to do it by hand, but you can definitely do it. Uh, so this is the first in a multi part series of building the FujiNet. And in this first episode, we're going to show you how we prepare the boards, uh, how we put the solder paste on the boards, and how we place the parts with the pick and place machine that's behind me. Uh, and then in follow-up episodes, we're gonna show you all of the additional components that go on the board, the through hole mounting components, flashing the firmware, testing it, and finally completing the FujiNet. So this is gonna be at least three or four parts, maybe even five, depending on how long they go, on what it takes to put these FujiNets together. We hope you enjoy it. If you've got any questions or comments, please make sure and leave them below. Uh, of course, if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you don't like it, hit the thumbs down. If you don't like it, let me know why. Uh, this is a new YouTube channel. We're still learning. We're still trying to improve what we're doing and uh, get the quality better. But we're doing what we can do. So I uh, would love it if you hit subscribe as well. So with that, Arcade Dog Bell, you ready to show them how to do the FujiNet builds? Okay, she's ready to go. Come on and let's check out what, we've got, what it takes to build the FujiNets. Okay, everybody, what we're going to do first is take some 99% uh, isotropic alcohol and we're going to uh, wet a tackless and uh, lintless towel that we use to wipe these off. And we're just going to take it and we're going to wipe off the boards just like this. And that takes all the residues from the manufacturing process as well as anything that might be getting on there from our fingers. And it takes it all off of the boards so that it gives a nice clean surface for the solder paste to attach and uh, make sure there's no impurities in there. So it's really a simple process. We just wipe them down, paying attention to the pads, and the pads are the silvery areas on the board. And that is where the solder paste actually is deposited and it makes contact with the components that we put on the boards. So we want to make sure those are nice and clean. And just go ahead and wipe every one of them down. This way, uh, like I said, it gets a nice clean surface with no oils on it that might prevent the solder paste from adhering correctly or cause impurities and lead to problems later on the life of these things. Uh, we're hoping that these little guys are going to be in use for a long time to come. And we want to make sure they start off nice and fresh. So that's our first step. Okay, the next step we uh, take solder paste and uh, use it on our machine here to spread it out onto the pads of the PC boards. Just go ahead and mix this up. It's kind of chilly out here in the garage, aka production lab. Uh, so we st stir this up to make sure if there's any flux in the bottom of it, it gets mixed into the solder paste. And we just take a good liberal amount and we go ahead and apply it to this OSH Parks stencil that we, uh, or stencil spreader that we got. Uh, let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll close this back up. Then we take one of our boards, we lift this little guy up, 
learned the hard way, get these with the frame. Uh, before I had one of these machines, I didn't see any point in getting them with the frame since I didn't have this handy little device to put it in, but uh, get it with the frame. That way it doesn't do this. And I did get a really nasty cut on this thing the other day by grabbing it the wrong way. I want to verify that it is lined up correctly and it actually looks like it's off a little. This thing may have slipped. It's been a while since I made any, but it's definitely off. No, actually that looks about right. So I'll just go ahead and hold my finger down on it. Make sure and hold it so it doesn't move. Yeah, it's perfect. I'm looking at the wrong angle. You just apply this paste just like it was a silk screen machine. Back in the day when people used to make t-shirts and other silk screen. Squeeze it in there really good. You want to make sure it gets it down into each of those holes. And again, it is kind of cold out here, so this stuff is really, really thick today. Scrape off the excess and then carefully lift this up and pull the board out. Again, being careful not to touch where you just put the solder paste. And then we inspect it to make sure that there is paste on every single connection where it needs to be. So that when we put it in the pick and place machine, there is solder where it, where it has to be for the components to attach. And that one looks really good. So we're going to do a couple more here. Okay, we're just going to do a few more of these. It's good to have a couple of them ready before we move over to the pick and place machine. Because the pick and place machine is pretty fast at what it does. Just put these down in here. Grab another one, spread the solder paste down into the cutouts, scrape the excess off, pull this out, carefully inspect it, it looks good. These up here out of the way, grab another one. In a warm summer day, it's a little bit easier to get the solder paste spread out, but the drawback is it tends to kind of semi-liquefy and then the solder paste gets off of the pads. So the cold weather is actually a little bit better. Excess there. And I got some on my fingers, so I'll clean that off. Generally when I do batches, these things I do anywhere from 10 to 50 of them at a time. Today's just going to be a small run. We're going to do uh, 10 of each color, 10 of the white and 10 of the red. So we have some on hand for people when they make place their orders. But this makes it so much easier than uh, doing it all by hand. The first ones I did like, were done all by hand and it is extremely time consuming and very very prone for error. Just getting the solder paste in the right places without a stencil becomes difficult when you're using the smaller components that are on this thing. This thing, the typical resistor on here is a 0201 size and 0201 is one millimeter by half a millimeter. So you're talking, you know, a half a grain of rice in size. And the amount of solder that goes in that pad for that is just a tiny bit. So trying to do this by hand is nearly impossible and extremely frustrating and, ext and uh, real prone to quality issues that leads to production problems down the road. So. Right now we got six done of each, and we'll take it over here to the pick-and-place machine next to get those six boards put together. Okay, right now the pick-and-place machine is turning up and it does a little self-calibration. Finds the corner, pretty much its limit of extent, just so it knows exactly where it is on the X and Y coordinates. and then returns back to the starting point. And we are going to turn the down camera lighting on so we've got a little bit of light <clears throat> and show you the basics of running a pick and place machine. We've got all the boards set up in here so we're just going to go ahead and load the file that matches these particular boards. <clears throat> and then we'll stick a board in the machine, slide it down to the origin, and actually what we're going to do is do a little calibration. I want to make sure that that uh, everything is lined up. It's been a while since we made the last one. And basically do a calibration. It finds points on the PC board where three components go. 
looks like our solder paste is a little off on that board. In fact, it is, so I'm going to junk that board. Let's return this back to home so that we can get that board out of there. <clears throat> that one just didn't look like the paste was lined up correctly on the pads. Let's try this one and see what it looks like. So again, run, we load up the file. <clears throat> and... Uh, We'll do some calibrations on here. That one looks good. Let's go to the next spot. And you just want to make sure that the device is centered in all the locations that the components it uses for targeting are. It looks good. And once we are happy with it, we hit the run and we let it build a board for us. And what it does is it picks the correct component from its ribbon location and it brings it over to the upward facing camera to make sure that one, it has a component at the end of the tool and two, that that component is oriented correctly and at the right size. And if it finds an error on any of them, it will stop and have you go correct that before it continues. But this makes life substantially easier than doing it by hand. Even when it does error, this is still a faster way of doing it. Now some of them, it's got two different size heads, so some of them it'll grab two components at one time and place that, and uh, that greatly increases the, the build time compared to a one head pick and place machine. But right there, the board has the components that we have loaded in the pick and place machine already on and in their proper locations on the board. So uh, next we're going to take it over and hand place three items that are uh, easy, just easier to place by hand than it is using the machine. So we'll be right back and show you how to hand place some of those. As you can see, when the pick-and-place machine is done, the components are all in there. Sometimes they have to be nudged over a little bit. You can see the USB controller there is kind of kind of cockeyed a little bit, so we have to nudge that by hand when we're putting the other components on there. But for the most part, it does a really good job of getting those parts on exactly right. And it does save a tremendous amount of time compared to doing it by hand. Hey guys, that was the end of the first video for building the Fujinet. In the next video we're going to show you uh, hand attaching some of the components and uh, what is involved in the next step of putting these things together. Uh, it takes some time to build them without a doubt. Uh, this video, if it were one solid video, it would probably be over an hour in length uh, and we're going to be fast forwarding through some sections because uh, you don't need to sit there and, and watch an oven toast and uh, you know, watch me stick pins in a piece of plastic for 30 minutes or whatever. So uh, check out the next video for the next steps on building the Fujinets. And again, you know, I appreciate you watching. Hit like and subscribe. That would greatly help us. We're trying to increase our subscribers. And Arcade Dog Bell really, really wants to uh, have more people here to say hi to her. So uh, do her a favor. You can see how happy she is. And uh, hit the subscribe button. And uh, check out our next video. It should be up pretty soon. Thanks. Thanks.